Lauderdale County Jail. And more good news about the troops. Our news begins now. Closed captioning of News Center 11 is provided by Pearl River Resort. You're watching WTOK TV, Meridian. Live from East Mississippi and West Alabama's news leader, this is News Center 11 at 10. Good evening, I'm Tom Daniels. Neshoba County authorities are waiting for an autopsy on the body of a young woman found by a roadside there today. Andrea Williams has a story. I'm 100% sure it was a homicide. Neshoba County well, Sheriff it's, it's Larry Myers to, is know, talking about Sunday like night's that. discovery of a body. The woman was found down this dirt road, County Road 2606, just off Highway 16 West, around 11 o'clock Sunday night. Authorities say all preliminary evidence shows that the woman was indeed murdered. Found here, laying beside the road, they say it appears that she might have even been killed right here on the site. Something which they say perhaps even happened not long before she was found by someone passing by. The question now, how did she get there? Or better yet, who was she with? Both just two of many questions that remained unanswered. At the present time, we do not have identification on her. All I can say is she's a young black female, somewhere in the age of 16 to 21 or 22. Uh, she weighed approximately 100 to 110 pounds. Sheriff Myers goes on to say that the woman was fully clothed. At this time, he says he's awaiting results from an autopsy before releasing the exact well, cause of death. To... Meanwhile, anyone with information on the case is asked to call the Neshoba County Sheriff's Department at area code 601-656-1414. With the search for the person or persons responsible ongoing, authorities are offering residents this advice. Anytime you have a murder, you know, you, everybody should be alarmed to some extent. So just, just be precautious, you know. In Neshoba County, Andrea Williams, News Center 11. Two men died in a one-vehicle accident around 2 o'clock this afternoon. It happened on Interstate 59 in the southbound lane about one mile from the Heidelberg exit. The Mississippi Highway Patrol says the driver of the van apparently fell asleep at the wheel. He survived. His two brothers did not. Their names have not been released. Allegations of abuse at the Lauderdale County Jail were made this afternoon at an NAACP press conference. Our George McDonald has a story. This is a gross a misrepresentation of power and abuse of power, and I think it should be judged and dealt with uh, severely. NAACP officials are calling for the job of Lauderdale County Jail Administrator Kim Reese after alleging the abuse of a 17-year-old inmate at the detention facility in March of this year. They claim the inmate was stripped down to his boxer shorts and tied to a pole under the order of the jail administrator. Uh, the administrator has said that he had damaged a chair which they had used to restrain inmates. They put uh, inmates in chairs and said he had broken this chair. Uh, which led up to this incident, so she felt like she wanted to punish him, so she tied him to the pole, put a helmet also on his head, and uh, stood him there for 30 to 45 minutes, and she came back to him more than one time and tormented him, actually talked to the individual while he was there on the pole. If they're going to make decisions like this, they shouldn't be in that position in the first place. Although incarcerated on charges of attempted murder, the NAACP says his treatment was inhumane and violated his civil rights. Regardless of what this young man did, I know this is not the Boy Scouts, but this is not Iraq, and this is not a war zone, so there's no reason for anybody to be treated this way. Officials at the Sheriff's Department could not comment on the matter. Due to possible pending litigation, we uh, must refrain from making public comments. We've done our own internal investigation. Uh, our law firm has done their investigation, and we're going to move forward. George McDonald, News Witness Center 11. A Meridian police officer found an estimated $1 million worth of marijuana after stopping an 18-wheeler on I-2059 Sunday afternoon. The 2,000 pounds of pot was packed between layers of broccoli. Major Steve Spears of the East Mississippi Drug Task Force said the bust was an example of good police work and the investigation continues. I'm not sure the exact location. That is, the case is still being investigated by us in Customs to determine the exact location of where the marijuana was going. The driver, 39-year-old Juan Salinas of Mission, Texas, was arrested. The drugs were turned over to the federal authorities, which will prosecute the case. 
A U.S. Marine who went missing in Iraq and later turned up in Lebanon was publicly or has publicly denied rumors that he may have deserted. The story tonight from ABC's Nancy Weiner. Today, for the first time, Marine Corporal Wasif Ali Hassoun publicly addressed the questions swirling around his mysterious disappearance in Iraq. I did not desert my post. I was captured and held against my will by anti-coalition forces for 19 days. Corporal Hassoun read from a prepared statement outside Quantico Marine Base in Virginia. The 24-year-old of Lebanese descent took no questions and gave next to no details about what happened to him. This was a very difficult and challenging time for me. Hassoun returned to the U.S. on Thursday after six days of medical evaluation at a military hospital in Germany. He went missing from his base near Fallujah on June 20th. An insurgent group later broadcast video of the blindfolded Marine and threatened to kill him. But then Hassoun showed up unharmed at the U.S. Embassy in Beirut on July 8th. Military investigators said it was possible the whole thing was a hoax. Any conclusions uh, about uh, what happened between the time that he disappeared and when he was returned to our control uh, remains to be the focus of, of both the repatriation process itself and then any investigations that might go on. Naval investigators plan to question Hassoun about his disappearance, but not until his repatriation process is complete, which could take weeks or months. Nancy Weiner, ABC News, Washington. The 287th Transportation Company of the Alabama National Guard was honored over the weekend in Livingston. Members had been on active duty in Iraq for more than a year. District 7 Congressman Artur Davis was on hand to present medals of appreciation. This ceremony is for the soldiers and uh, I'm so proud of those guys. They did a great job over there. They made me proud. It's great to be back home. Uh, this is like the second war for me, but this one was well, a lot worse than the first one. So it's just good to be back around family and friends. I simply want to thank them for what they've done, to certainly acknowledge that we're so thankful to God that he brought them back here, and we have such an understanding of the sacrifices they went through. About 300 members of the 287th had been in Iraq since March of 2003. The unit transports military cargo. Well, at 6 tonight, Jason mentioned some cool temperatures. Are we still going to get those tonight? Yeah, looks like it. Even though we're not cooling down quite as quickly as we did last night, there's still some dry air in place. And with dry air, clear skies and light winds, you typically have your cooler nights. This time last week, we were in the upper 70s and lower 80s. Currently, we're in the low 70s across most of the Twin States. It's 74 now in Meridian, 72 currently in Columbus, 76 up toward Greenville. Satellite radar composite, there are some clouds way down into northwest Florida. That's about as close as they come to us, with the exception of those fair weather clouds that develop into the afternoon today. We'll expect more of the same for those tomorrow, but the temperatures start going back up and the humidity starts to increase, and we'll detail your full forecast, which does include some more rain toward the weekend coming up. All right, thank you, Jason. The controversy over Governor Barber's Medicaid plan has some Mississippi residents concerned, but one state lawmaker is optimistic the plan will work. That and other issues discussed at today's Council of Governments meeting. Stan Torgerson reports. Representative Greg Snowden was called on for comments about the current Medicaid crisis in the state. He is optimistic the problem will be solved. I believe on September 15th, this is not working like it's supposed to be. We're going to extend it further. And ultimately, if it's not working like it's intended and we have people that are uncovered, we're going to, uh, we're going to go, you know, put it back like it was, regardless of the cost. If it is put back, Snowden said, the legislature will have to find an additional $50 million. We had a budget deal in May. We had everything on the table. We knew the amount of money we had to spend, and we made some tough choices. And now, rather than giving this program time to work, some folks want to say, well, now let's just go back and put it because they're kind of panicking. Let's go back and do it. Well, you know, that's $50 million. Well, where's that $50 million going to come? We're not bringing this, we're not bringing education and highways back to the table. You know, we're talking about another $50 million deficit. County Supervisor Craig Hitt pointed out the state's money problems are impacting the cities and the counties. You know, we have to realize that city and county taxes are being called on to pick up some of the areas that are not being funded by the state anymore. 
But City Councilman George Thomas was optimistic about the 2005 city budget. As far as I know, there probably will not be a tax increase in the city. Uh, we'll limit it to what we've got coming in. Since sales tax collections are up for the city, and there has been growth, there will be more for the council to budget. Stan Torgerson, New Center 11. Speaking of money, the Meridian School Board was presented with a 2004-2005 budget at the regular board meeting this evening. Suzanne Smith explains. Uh, we have presented a board uh, a budget to the public and to the school board tonight with um, some $60 million in revenues and over $61 million in expenditures. We will actually be spending $1.1 million more this year than we're taking in, and that's due in large because of special revenue funds that have carry-forward balances that will be spent. We also plan to use $600,000 worth of reserves in our district maintenance fund or our general operating fund to balance the budget this year. Smith says the hope is over the next year or two that the Meridian School District's or fiscal problems will be solved. Still ahead, Jason will have your full seven-day forecast. And then a new tool for losing those extra pounds. Live from Meridian, you're watching East Mississippi and West Alabama's news leaders. News Center 11 at 10 with Tom Daniels. Weather with meteorologist Jason Simpson. And sports with Jamie Triplett. This is News Center 11 at 10. News Center 11 at 10, brought to you by Sunbelt Motors. We're driven to be the best.